Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the fourth little video in my relay explanation, like how to wire relays in more advanced ways. Um, I started off with some more simple ways to wire relays and I've gotten up to this one which is a little bit more complex and it's something that you can actually use on your vehicle, on your car or your motorcycle. So first one I'm going to then I'm going to talk a little bit about why you would want to do this and then I'm going to talk about how to do it. So since we are talking about automotive relays, I should plug one of my other videos. I have a video where I have an automotive relay connected to a car and I have the I have it halfway taken apart. I have the cover taken off of it so you can see how it works. You can see what happens inside the relay without looking at at one of these little diagrams like this. So that link is in the description. I also have that video popping up here if you want to if you want to jump and you want to watch that really quick. But it should be pretty helpful whenever you are trying to understand relays and you're trying to understand relay functions. So what the end result of this is, and what you're going to end up with after you follow this wire diagram, if you if you were to do it, is you would have, for example, like on my on my motorcycle, I want to be safer at night. So what it's going to have is it's going to have running lights on the side, and whenever my turn signal comes on, those running lights will turn into turn signals that blink opposite the factory turn signal system. So if the factory turn signal is on, then that parking light will be off. And if the factory turn signal is off, then the parking light will be on. And it'll blink back and forth until the turn signal is turned off, and then it goes back to normal. And doing it this way decreases the load on your electrical system. So this is getting more into the why you would do it this way. Whenever you add more light bulbs to your turn signal system, it will slow down your blink rate. Just like whenever you blow a light bulb and you have less light bulbs in your turn signal system because one just blew, you have a faster blink rate. So when there's more bulbs in the system, you have a slower blink rate, and when there's less bulbs in the system, you have a faster blink rate. You know, here where I live, we have laws that govern how fast a turn signal can actually blink. It can't blink too fast, and it can't blink too slow. It's got to blink that perfect, that perfect speed, and that speed is specified. So when you wire it this way, you're introducing almost no extra load to the system. As you're only taking up maybe a quarter, not a quarter, a fraction of a watt. Not even a quarter of a watt or an eighth of a watt. It's, it's really, really low because relays, these relays use hardly any electricity whenever they, whenever they operate. So that minimal amount of electricity is going to make a very small load on your electrical system. So why would you want to do this? Well, I mentioned my motorcycle earlier, and my main concern is I want to be more visible at night. When I'm riding around and I'm coming up on an intersection where somebody could pull out in front of me, I want to know that I have lights on my bike that are bright enough, not where it's it's ridiculous, but I want to, I want to know that I have lights on my bike that are bright enough that's going to let that person know, like, oh, hey, yeah, there's a motorcycle right there. Like that, Instead of looking twice, they just have to look once and see, like, oh, wow, yeah, okay, there's a motorcycle there. I'm going to let the motorcycle pass, and they're not going to pull out in front of me. I don't hit them. And that day ends well. And then whenever I go to turn, so my my parking lights, they're, they're great, they're shining, they're doing their thing. And whenever I go to turn, I now have extra turn signals on my bike, so I'm even more visible. Because now I have blinking lights, extra blinking lights, like maybe an extra one on the front and an extra one on the back for each side. And I have extra blinking lights, blinking lights attract the eye, people are going to see me. Now, if you want to do this on a car, people do all kinds of crazy things to cars. It's not really to be more visible. I guess it is to be more visible. That's their end result is they, you know, they just, I want to make myself more visible. So they add all this crazy stuff to their car. And with all the options that you have nowadays, you have turn signals that you can add to your, to your side mirror in your car. You have turn signals like the 350Z. I think it's a 350Z. They have turn signals or is it, maybe it's a marker light, but it's in front of the front tire. You can have that where it's a turn signal. Or if you want to add more to your front bumper or your rear bumper so that you're more visible, whatever the case. You can add as many as you want, and following this wire diagram, it will not add more electrical load to your stock turn signal system. So now we're getting into the how. So how would I do this? Now here you can see I've drawn an automotive relay. And I'm going to go over this one section at a time. I don't know if this looks a little overwhelming, but you can rule out this part completely pretty much. I mean, that's just kind of me roughly drawing the stock system in the car. The only thing you need to know up here is that you're going to be tapping into your turn signal, and that's going to be feeding this coil on the relay. And you're also going to be tapping into, I would say, 
you can tap into the parking light. If you're only going to have like one extra bulb, maybe two extra bulbs, and even if you make those LEDs, you can have three, four extra bulbs. You can tap into your parking light system, or it's going to be a little bit more difficult this way, but you would find uh, a way to go straight to your battery. Now, if you do it this way, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to wire a, a cutoff switch because what's going to happen is this light down here is your extra one that you're going to be adding. It's going to be on all the time if you go straight to your battery. A way that you can get around that is you can find in your factory fuse box, you can find something that's ignition switched positive. So there's, there's usually some open fuse places where you can you can stick a connector on, run it into a fuse, and now you'll have a light that's on, that's always on, whenever you, you turn the key on your car. That's why I would recommend tapping into your parking light system right there. And I wouldn't use a vampire tap. What I would recommend using is actually cutting the wire in half and soldering wires together. So you would solder the new wire into that one. And then you would use, you would use heat shrink tubing over that wire. And there's videos all over YouTube on how to solder and how to use heat shrink tubing. You can buy it pretty cheap. Um, soldering irons, maybe 20 bucks. Solder is pretty cheap also. And then the heat shrink tubing, and you're, re you're really not adding that much more. With the, the, the headaches that it saves, I would highly recommend doing soldering instead of using the little butt connectors, which I have a picture popping up here. Those connections get weak over time, and it's open to the air, so it's open to oxidize. And also, if you use the vampire taps, they're just all around bad. You, you actually damage the wire when you tap into it. I wouldn't recommend anybody using those for anything at all. You damage the wire when you tap into it, which opens it up to oxidation and makes it even harder for the next guy who wants to come in and remove that vampire tap, because now he removed it, and it's still open to outside air. So... What I've had to do before is actually cut into the wire, solder it back together, and put heat shrink tubing over it so that it's protected from the elements again. You shouldn't have to do all of that. Just do it the right way the first time, and then you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it again. So that's how you would tap into your factory system. So you can ignore this part up here for the rest of this video if it's kind of makes this whole thing overwhelming. So explaining just the basics of how this relay works and what would happen whenever your turn signal comes on. So right now the turn signal is off, so there's no power going to this bulb. Whenever this bulb turns on, you can see the switch down here moved, right? Now, when that switch moves, it opens the circuit. Um, an open circuit versus a closed circuit is just basically on versus off. So when I say an open circuit, I'm talking about something being off. And when I say a closed circuit, I'm talking about something being on. So my turn signal is on, that powers this relay, this electromagnetic coil here is what closes this gate. All right? Now when that happens, electromagnetic coil closes the gate, that opens up a connection for over here and you can have another light bulb, I'm gonna, that'll be later on in this video where I kind of talk about that. You can have other light bulbs that this one would actually be on when this one is off. So I'm going to go over that a little bit later. So, turn signal is in the off state. Electromagnetic coil is not on. This gate is in the off position. And as it's in the off position, this bulb is on. Now this bulb is on because now you have a circuit that's going all the way through here to your battery or if you wired it like I was talking and you wired it to your parking light then it would it would be wired that way. And that's your circuit. That's how this bulb here is getting power. Now whenever you move it into the on state, you can tell this bulb came on, right? Now when this bulb comes on, this circuit is now energized. This is ground down here, right? So this, this has a complete circuit. This electromagnet can work, and it can pull this little gate down. When it pulls it down, if you have something connected here, it turns on. But if you don't have anything connected there, then that bulb shuts off. So that's how it operates as a turn signal. So back and forth, back and forth. You can see turn signal on, turn signal off. Right Now let's add something else to this circuit. Let's say you want to have something hanging off of pin 87 down here. And this is the bottom of the relay. I've got this little legend over here on the side. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Well, this is the same relay when it's in its on state. 
All right? So it's in its on state, it's in its off state, on, off, on, off, back and forth. All right? You can see what's going on inside of there, and based off of what I was describing before, you can kind of understand a little bit of what's going on. Going over this again, turn signal is in its off state. This is not getting power, so that little gate is not closed. Uh, when I say close, I mean it's not over here. So this system is getting power through the relay to this bulb. Now, whenever the turn signal is turned on, it's on now. The circuit's energized. Electromagnetic coil is energized. It always has its ground, so that's, that's not an issue. And now, this pin 30 here is now going through the relay, through 87, turning on this light bulb. So you can tell, back and forth, back and forth, you can see what's going on. That little door that's in the middle of the relay is just switching back and forth between the two light bulbs. You have extra turn signals, all that. So recapping all of this, you don't have to wire it straight to your battery. And if you do, you want to wire it into a spot in your fuse box. That's something that is ignition switched. So when you turn your key on, that powers on the fuse box. You want to tap into your turn signal there because that is what powers this electromagnetic coil and you need that trigger powering the electromagnetic coil so that this can operate so that switch can go back and forth between on off on off for these two bulbs or for just for one bulb whatever you want to do and obviously you would tap into your parking light there if you're going to use this for your parking light but be careful on how much load you put on your parking light system you don't want to put too much You can upgrade your parking lights to LED if you want to, if you want to decrease the amount of load on the whole system. The parking lights don't blink, so it's actually just going to be better overall because you don't end up using as much electricity on your car. If they're already LED, then just leave them the way they are. Anyway, thanks for watching the video this far. I'm going to go through the little relay functions again. This is it with the extra bulbs. I'm just going to have this going while I'm talking this last little bit. Anyway, thanks for watching the video this far. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, or if you want to check out my other videos, the other relay videos that are before this one, or if I make any other videos after this one, which I should because there's any number of ways that you can wire these relays. It's just simple enough that anybody can really follow along. So if you want to, leave a comment down below and just maybe leave an idea, just something you want to see that's possible to be done with a relay. Just leave that down below. And uh, just be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share this with your friends. Anyway, I hope this was informative and it at least helps somebody out in some way. So thanks a lot, guys, and God bless.